Right, so there's been an incident, yes. Um, basically, this, this started about uh, an hour, an hour and a half ago. Uh, I'll give you the exact time of the attack in a second. Basically, you had reports of sirens going off near this nuclear facility in occupied Palestine, right? We're not going to call it Israel. So I'll, I'll show you this uh, over here from the Jerusalem Post, okay? Um, they said reports of sirens in southern occupied Palestine and foreign media reports of those sirens being near Dimona, okay? So you, you have to understand something. Dimona is uh, a region where you have uh, this nuclear facility, okay? And, I mean, obviously the timing of it is interesting. We'll cover that in a second, but... Um, you had reports in Israeli media, right, in, in, in occupied Palestine about this. And I'll show you a bit over here uh, from the videos that were circ circulating on social media, right? So I did a whole thread when it was breaking, and I, and I uh, was posting about it on Twitter. So uh, you, you should definitely follow there if you're not already. Uh, take a look. So... Right, so... So here's some of the footage, there's no sound. All right, so it's just looping there. And another thing, uh, you also had reports of an explosion and it was so loud that people could hear it in Jerusalem. Okay, here, I'm gonna play for you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I, I'm I'm not sure. You know, we're we're not sure. It's still unconfirmed whether that was, uh, um, uh, you know, a rocket being intercepted or just a a, a, a jet uh, breaking the sound barrier. Regardless, we're, I'm just giving you what, what was reported. Okay, then. Um, you know, up until this point, we, we didn't know what was going on. So you, you, we just heard, okay, there's sirens going off near this nuclear facility. And all of a sudden, you had reports from Sana from the Syrian uh, Arab News Agency, that the Syrian air defense systems were activated, and they were confronting uh, Israeli warplanes in, um, hold on, in, in the Damascus countryside. Let me show you on the map, maybe you can see over here. Okay, so we're talking about over here in eastern countryside of Damascus, okay? So th this is a regular occurrence, right? Israel bombing Syria pr practically every week. But it, this happened right at the same time. And then a military source told Sana that Israel had basically attacked Syria at 1.38 a.m., okay? And that uh, they had responded with surface-to-air missiles. And afterwards, hold on, I'm going to pull it up for you so you can see. It's, it's in Arabic, but still, I'm, I'm translating. So... They had confronted uh, the uh, Israeli forces with uh, the missiles, and they sustained, I think, four four wounded soldiers. They had four wounded soldiers and some material damage, some uh, you know material losses. That's basically the uh, the summary. And afterwards, okay, if you look at uh, what they were saying in the Times of Israel, all right. So look what they say here, right? <laughs> They're saying in response to the launch of the surface-to-air missile, Israeli jets conducted a second round of airstrikes in Syria, bombing the battery that fired the projectile, as well as, well as other air defense systems. Okay, this is according to the Israeli occupation forces. And they, they also posted this on Twitter. Um, you know, they, they had posted on Twitter that, you know, a surface-to-air missile was fired from Syria into Negev and that they had struck the battery. Okay, so this is where it's coming from. Now, by the way, here's some more footage of them uh, attacking the Russians. Watch your ears. Me, me. Okay, so just going back to, to the times of Israel, all right? Look what they're saying here. This is hilarious, honestly. Okay. They're saying that, uh, this according to their spokesperson, that the military did not believe this was a deliberate attack on their nuclear facility. Okay? So they're saying that the target was not the nuclear facility. What they're saying is that, apparently, this surface-to-air missile that was launched by Syria, 
against the Israeli jets. It followed an Israeli jet all the way back to the nuclear facility, which is 400 kilometers away. <laughs> what? <laughs> Let me show you on the map, okay? And uh, our friend over here, Lebanese News and Updates, took the time to, to, uh, to calculate the distance with Google Maps. Take a look, all right? So, you know, we're talking about Dara over here and, uh, you know, all the way to... To the nuclear facility i mean okay that, that's that's excuse me that's 200 kilometers i'm i'm confused i'm i'm thinking about the uh the sam so you have to consider that the the missile they're saying was fired by by syria all right this is uh it's a sa5 okay so the sa5 that's part of the s200 system so you know the russians they have these surface to air missiles they're you know you fire them from a battery and it chases it down a plane right they have the S-200, S-300, S-400 is their latest version. The S-200 is quite old, right? And the Israelis always make fun of the, 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 uh, the Syrians as having old Soviet equipment, right? Well, uh, what, how on God's earth did this missile, the SAM, that was fired by Syria, go all the way to this nuclear facility over there? Isn't that a bit weird? <laughs> so, something is off with this story. I mean, either their defense systems are so crap that this, this Sam was traveling 200 kilometers uninhibited all the way. Okay, here you go. Here's Dimona, right? And there's the Negev Nuclear Research Center. Okay, so this missile, you're telling me traveled all the way from here. This occupied Golan Heights, here's Syria. It traveled all the way here and nothing stopped it? Really? That's incredible. That is really incredible. I don't know what to say about that. I mean, you know, either either they're lying, either they're they're flat out lying, or they're you know something is up. Someone's getting fired. Someone is getting fired in <laughs> in in their um in their air defense systems today. Someone's getting fired. But I, you know what? It's, what is really funny to me is how they just overtly admit, like, no, no, no. The Syrians were not targeting our nuclear facility, right? It says the, the IDF spokesman stressed that They're, the target was not the nuclear facility. And, and they just overtly admit that, yeah, you know, this was just like a regular bombing of the Golan Heights, you know, like Israel does every week. <laughs> like, <laughs> you know, in order to save themselves embarrassment, they just, they just uh, say that they just own up to, to uh, their illegal bombings, which they carry out every week, right? Every single week, uh, virtually every single week. They go and they bomb the Golan Heights, they bomb Qnetra, they bomb Damascus countryside, and they say, oh, we're attacking Iranian targets, whatever that means, right? And <laughs> they, they never own up to it, right? I think on some occasions they've admitted that they've done hundreds of them. If it, it's probably in the thousands now, if you consider the last 10 years, right? Um, so there's that. But now they just, they just overtly admit it, like, no, 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 this was a regular bombing, and you, you know, a stray missile just followed us all the way back, whatever. <laughs> That's interesting, and you obviously know why, the t why this is so sensitive, right? You know why this is sensitive, because just a week ago, uh, a little over a week ago on April 11th, right, you had Israel attack Iran's nuclear facility in Natanz. And it's so interesting seeing how they're reporting it here, right? Because if you go and you read the headlines in the international press about Natanz, about Iran, they say it, Iran blames Israel, even though it's Israeli media who's saying the Mossad attacked Iran's nuclear facility. Israeli media are saying that, not Iran. And they, they say that in all of their articles, BBC, CNN, New York Times, you name it. Actually, the New York Times <laughs> has its own sources to... Unnamed U.S. intelligence officials telling it, yeah, Mossad did this. And they still say Iran is blaming Israel. What? what? You just reported that it's Israel. <laughs> anyway, it's just, and, and now it's just, they're just straight up say in the, in the titles, right? In the headlines. No, Sir, Syrian strike near, near Israeli nuclear facility. Even though, according to the Israelis themselves, this was a stray missile, right? It, it just... It just managed to travel all the way <laughs> uninhibited. How, how incredible, right? You know, the Israelis always show off like, oh, we have, uh, you know, the Iron Dome and we're always shooting down uh, uh, rockets fired from Gaza and hot air balloons. Watch out, right? We'll bomb you for, for that. And, uh, you know, we're so capable. 
right? We're so advanced. And, and the Syrians, they have these, these old uh, good-for-nothing Soviet systems. Wow. Wow. If you can't protect a nuclear facility, I mean, and, and, and you're claiming you're the best. I mean, that, that's a bit weird. I don't know. So, I mean, you guys tell me, what do you think? <laughs> you think they're bullshitting us? Or do you think that uh, they, they just can't handle it? They, you know, because maybe their Iron Dome, maybe their conventional uh, air defense systems, they're good for, you know, um, again, I think Lebanese news updates uh, made this point that they're good against, you know, cheap rockets made in Gaza because they don't have the means. They're clandestine made rockets, but they're no good against, you know, conventional systems. Now, again, that's that if you go and you you you, you enter some, you know, military uh, uh, forum where they discuss, um, you know, where they discuss conventional weapon systems and surface to air missiles and all you, you will you will never finish debating in there. OK, good luck to you. Right. <laughs> Everyone has an opinion on that. But um, I don't know what to make of this, honestly. I, I, f I think that it, they're either lying or this is just extremely embarrassing. And, you know, it, if this is coming just, just barely a week after Israel attacked a nuclear facility in Iran, I mean, if that isn't a sign from God, I don't know what is. If that is not karma, I don't know. No, I, I don't know what is. Again, it's not the same thing. Nothing was damaged, right? So no, let's be clear. Nothing was damaged. I mean, as far as we know, they could be lying. I don't know if they're lying. I'm not saying they are. But as far as we know, as far as we know, nothing is damaged, right? No one is injured at that nuclear facility, right? But nonetheless, I mean, the timing of it, 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 it you know, it's definitely interesting. Again, if that's not a sign from God, I don't know what is, man. So... Let me just uh, let me just go back over here to this. Hold on. Right. So if you if you read the the article uh, from Times of Israel, Israel, they're still saying here that you know though uncommon. Syrian surface-to-air missiles fired at Israeli fighter jets have, in the past, <laughs> caused damage and triggered sirens as they fall back to Earth. Though uncommon, right? Because Israel is so superior. In 2019, an SA-5 missile that had been fired at an Israeli aircraft landed in northern Cyprus, causing an explosion and a large fire in a village there, right? So, I mean, if their point is that these things are so... Uh, they're relics of the Cold War... Well, I'm not going to argue with that. They are kind of relics of the Cold War. But, uh, you know, uh, I don't know how that accounts for what happened today. Huh? And here they're saying that two, were, uh, two landed in, in Jordan, right, in 2017. So that's about it. That's all, that's all there is in the article. So they're just saying that, okay, yeah, we did bomb Syria. We did go and bomb it illegally. But, you know, there was just a stray missile that followed us all the way back. <laughs> Okay, so that's all we have for now, right? I, you know, as far as I can tell from both sides, th those are the hostilities, and that's, that's ended for now. Now, obviously, I think we should all be happy that it didn't turn into something bigger, right? Because then Israel will get their asses handed to them, right? You, you, let's be very clear with each other on something, okay? Because, you know, uh, the Israelis, yes, they, they are subsidized $3.8 billion a year by the U.S. military. Oh, well, sorry by the U.S. for their military, right? They receive military aid to the tune of 3.8 billion, and among other things. And of course, they have the full backing of NATO, right? They have the full backing of the, the Western world. When push comes to shove, though, that doesn't account for much. You, you look at 2006, right? From July till you know, mid-July mid to mid-August, so it, it was about one month, 33 days, right? When they had... Um, Hezbollah fighting against the uh, Israeli occupation forces. They, they, they kicked their asses. And that's, that's not even, a, you know, you, you have to take into consider, consideration Hezbollah is not even uh, in possession of a navy or an air force like they are. And all of this American aid, American equipment. And they took on a conventional army, right? So, you know, they want to posture here and say that Oh, th this is just uh, an accident. I don't know. I'm, I'm not so sure about that. You, you feel me? 
Um, you know, if, if, if uh, a, a stray missile is following them 200 kilometers to a nuclear site, what, the, what does that say? And you can be sure there are people shitting their pants about this, right? It's, free, it's, it's actually funny because if you go and you read the comments on Facebook, on Twitter, wherever, uh, you know, it was like IDF or, or J-Post or something, <laughs> you, have, you have all the people who are dismayed, right? Last week they were clapping after uh, attacking Natanz, and now all of a sudden they seem to be, uh, you know, they seem to be in shock. All these sad reacts on Facebook. Oh my God. <laughs> yo. Yo. Eh, oui. C'est comme ça, hein? C'est comme ça. In any case, that's about it for now. All right, I'm not going to say anything else because that's all we have. So, oh, and, and, and also I, I published, um, well, we've, we've already done several videos on the Natanz incident, but yesterday I published the latest article um, on that attack at Natanz. It's on Substack. Go read it. It's free. It doesn't cost you anything. It's uh, uh, richardmethers.substack.com. Okay, so there you go.